Welcome to NCIX Tech Tips. Now that the X99 chipset has been released, we are also seeing a slew of other new technologies that are coming along with it. And today we'll be looking at one of the changes people are most curious about, DDR4 memory. Let's start with a quick overview of the new standard. From a distance, they look very, very similar, but there are quite a few subtle changes. Number one, the pin count has increased from 240 pins to 288 pins, but the overall length stays the same. This little notch that helps indicate which direction to put the module in is now closer to center, so you'll want to pay extra attention when installing DDR4 sticks, but it has been moved, so you can't accidentally install DDR4 in a DDR3 slot and vice versa. They are not intercompatible. Now for the things you can't see. DDR4 runs at higher frequencies than before. The mainstream level starts at 2133 MHz, while enthusiast grade stuff is in the range of 2800 to 3000 megahertz plus. Latencies go up, which isn't necessarily a positive thing, but given how much faster they're running in terms of frequency, it should pretty much balance out, just like every other generation of DDR improvements. Now, one thing that doesn't go up is the power consumption. The new DDR4 standard only requires 1.2 volts down from DDR3's 1.5 volts. Now the low voltage standard for DDR4 has not been finalized yet, but it's expected to be around 1.05 volts. So with lower power consumption, we expect to see less heat generated as well. Corsair's first lineup of DDR4 memory happens to have a very low profile heat spreader, which is a welcome sight compared to their tall DDR3 vengeance sticks that did have compatibility issues with some coolers, although they're not as striking looking either. The last notable change is an update to Intel's Extreme Memory Profile System, XMP, called Intel Extreme Memory Profile 2.0. It actually affects your CPU's base clock and multiplier now as well on some motherboards. We noticed that using XMP profiles actually increased the base clock to a 125 strap on the Extreme Edition CPU while lowering the multiplier and locking in at a higher CPU frequency. So whether this is motherboard manufacturers taking some liberties with the XMP spec or whether it's something that we're gonna see more of on an ongoing basis, I guess remains to be seen. So what do all these changes mean for you, the consumer? Well, for most people, Frankly, it won't really matter. If you're an average user who browses the internet and watches movies on their computer, then DDR4 offers you that. Um, if you're a gamer, then this also might not necessarily give you much of an improvement either. We ran Battlefield 4 on both our Z97 and X99 test benches and found that there was no difference. But in certain applications, say for example, rendering, we may see different results, but that'll have to wait for another video. We then turned our attention to some synthetic tests and NCIX Anthony went to work with the WinRAR compression benchmark and IDA64, which are useful comparisons as WinRAR offloads data onto memory during compression and IDA64 can measure things like the maximum theoretical performance of RAM. Trying to keep the comparison as similar as possible, 16 gigs of memory, 128 gigs of SSD storage was done, but ultimately these are two very different chipsets with different processors and different platforms. So processor wise, on Z97, Anthony used a 4790K and on X99, he used a 5960X, both of which were overclocked to 4.5 gigahertz. Now, as you can see, the 16-thread X99 system more than doubles the performance of the 8-thread Z97 system in the WinRAR benchmark. This is good news for DDR4 memory, as well as having more cores. It just means that the 250% increase means it's not just due to those threads. We also checked out some leaderboards and noticed that clock speed and the number of threads did not necessarily equate to a higher score. In fact, this system is even beating a 48 thread dual Xeon processor server. The score isn't based on storage speed either, so this is definitely a good indicator. The results tell a similar story in IDA64. The DDR3 system reaches a nice maximum of 28 gigabytes per second read and 29 gigabytes per second write, but DDR4 absolutely blows it out of the water with a maximum of 49 gigabytes per second read and 37 gigabytes per second writes. Pretty nice improvement, bearing in mind, of course, that X99 runs in quad channel compared to Z97's dual channel. Synthetic tests are nice though, and we will revisit this again in a while 
once we have some stuff that's not just nice, but it's also more real world based. Until then, this is the preview of what DDR4 has to offer and I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you for watching. Comment below if you think you'll be upgrading to DDR4 in the near future. And as always, don't forget to subscribe to NCIX Tech Tips from our videos just like this one.